Next couple tools I want to talk about are types of sanders. Now what you see here is not the type of sander you would use to smooth out panels and other project parts for a piece of furniture. You'd use a random orbit sander such as this for that type of work. These sanders are really meant more for, for shaping of project parts. In the middle you've got a motor and then there's a shaft out each end and that drives two different types of sanders. On that end is a disc sander. We'll talk about that in a moment. We'll start over here with the belt sander. Belt sander simply runs downward like this when the motor is turned on. And then here you've got a table. The table tilts or can be set at 90 degrees to the belt. Now one of the best uses for a belt sander like this is simply smoothing out, perhaps uh, finishing up uh, the uh, edges of a piece. If you've gone through a table saw or band saw, maybe have a little burn mark on the edge of a piece, a belt disc sander like this will quickly take off that little bit of burn mark. The table has a slot in it. That accepts a miter gauge. That's real convenient when you're doing, for example, the ends of narrow pieces like this. You can keep that workpiece square to the belt as you sand it. It also allows you to work back and forth across the full width of the belt, making better use of your material. It's also very useful, I think probably I use mine most, for smoothing out curved project parts. When you ha have a project part that needs to be cut to a curve, typically it'll be rough sawn at the band saw, and then you'll bring it back over to a, the belt sander to finish it up, sanding up to the line. So running as quickly as it does, that belt sander removes stock quickly and gets me right down. My line's taken care. You can still see a few of the bandsaw marks, uh, but not nearly as pronounced as they are down this edge that I have not yet sanded. The belt gives you a lot, of, a lot more area, a lot of straight area here. You can work back and forth, and as it rotates around, you have a lot more area you can work on, so it doesn't clog nearly as quickly. There are times that the, the disc portion of the sander is a little more convenient. One of the advantages you have with a disc sander is you've got a circle, so the outside edge is spinning more quickly than the, that part closest to the middle. So you can adjust your workpiece to where you need it on, the, on there, depending on how quickly you want to remove stock, or perhaps how prone it is to burning. If you have a species that's likely to burn, you would work closer to the middle, where the speed is slower. If you need some aggressive stock removal, work out here towards the edge. Now notice this little arrow here. This shows you the rotation of the disc. You always want to work so that the disc is pressing downward, keeping your workpiece on the table. And you can see how quickly that removes stock. So even though we start out rough cut, with just a few seconds here at the disc sander, we can bring this curve right up to where it should be. Both of these tables also tilt, so if you want to sand or a bevel or a chamfer on a piece, you can simply raise or lower the table. Now, a belt disc sander works great when you're working on outside curves or outside edges like, you, like on this piece. But what if you have a cutout, like here? You can't use that on the belt disc sander. That's where an oscillating spindle sander is nice to have. Here you've got a drum that runs up and down, and it oscillates like this so you're using more of the drum surface. You can simply take this, put it on here, and now you can work on inside shapes. Oscillating spindle sander typically comes with a variety of drum sizes. 
you want to use the largest diameter drum that you can for the curve at hand. For this inside contained curve, this drum almost fits the diameter and gives me a smooth transition as I sand that curve. Here, if this were to be the apron or the base of a project, I've got a much larger, more gentle curve. So I'm going to trade this out for a larger drum. One thing to note is on an oscillating spindle sander, this is a reverse thread. So it's not just righty-tighty, it's righty-loosey. You have to remember it's backwards. And that, the reason for that is when you get the drum in place and it starts to spin, that rotation keeps the uh, nut tight on the shaft. Just cinch it down. That's all there is to changing drums. And now I can work along here, sanding up to my line. Oscillating spindle sander is terrific because you can work however you need to all the way around the piece. The, there's a table surrounding it, so whatever's comfortable from whatever angle, uh, you're, if you have a piece that really has a severe turn to it, you can stay in the same place, work the piece around, and it's always supported on all sides of the drum.